You were live. Good evening, good evening. We'll give it a few minutes here for people to filter in. Oh, hoping for a good showing tonight. I think tonight's uh, study is a good one. It's on shining the light of the gospel. It's uh, always an exciting time to be able to share the gospel with someone. And I think at uh, any given time, we all should be prepared and ready to do so. Well, again, I give it a little bit here for some people to filter in. There's Mr. Skip. How we doing tonight, Skip? <clears throat> Just giving it a few minutes here, Skip, for people to kind of filter in. What What's filtering in? Well, whatever. Come Two, in. Come in. Good like, evening, Tim McDowell. How are you? Certain people not allowed. Are you filtering certain people out? I ain't filtering nobody. Come on. Come as you are, is what I say. Tim McDowell, how's it going, buddy? <clears throat> All right. But, so what's tonight's, uh, what's tonight's study called? It's uh, Shining the Light of the Gospel. Shining the Light of the Gospel. Big um, Mike's here with us. How's it going, Big Mike? What's up, Big Mike? How's it going, buddy? Big Mike's been out doing some more fishing. I know for a little while there, I know he got a new job. And it seemed like he was pretty busy, but he's getting out, going live a few hours at a time, back hundo hunting. Good evening, Jello. El Catfish Grande, what's up, what's up? Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Tell you, uh, this old man's uh, got up at 3 o'clock the last two mornings to, and been at work by about 4, 4.40 the last two mornings. And uh, it's been hard on me. It's been a while since I got to work that early. I usually get to work about 7 o'clock. But... Uh, I needed to check out some things that were going on before I got there. Anyway, it's going to work out because uh, now I got enough time in. I can take off about half a day Friday and go fishing. Yeah, and I'm going to be out on the water first thing in the morning and then fish that evening, you know, that evening too. And then Saturday, fish, take a lunch break and fish and fish some more. All right. So. Well, again, for all those that just came in, uh, tonight's lesson is is titled uh, Shining the Light of the Gospel. And uh, I think that's something we all should be, always be prepared to do, to share the gospel, uh, share our story with uh, with anyone, Lord, uh, that, you know, the Lord puts in front of us or to uh, to share it with, that it would help lead them to the Lord. Good evening, Valerie. How are you? <clears throat> Big Mike ain't none, normally done fish until 3 a.m., so yeah, he'd be in trouble. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, it's been hard on me. I usually, like I said, I usually get up at 5 every morning. At two hours earlier, uh, I think I miss out on my best sleep. <laughs> <clears throat> So, all right. All well, right. You want to get us started with the uh, introduction? I will. Again, it's shining the light of the gospel, and uh, here is uh, here's the introduction. It says, "Healthy things grow." As Christians, we are expected to grow in our faith. Sharing the good news of Jesus should be one area we should continually. Excel. In 2019, a study showed that 47% of millennial Christians felt that sharing their faith wasn't necessary. When asked why, they said, it feels intrusive and makes people uncomfortable. The Apostle Paul said, how then can they call on him they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? 
That's Romans 10, 14. When we hear the word preacher, we immediately think about the person who speaks on stage each Sunday. Preaching is, in fact, one of the spiritual gifts. That's in Ephesians 4, 11. But every Christian is called to proclaim the good news of Jesus. In the Great Commission, Jesus instructs each of us to preach, share, proclaim, tell the gospel. Mark 6, 15, 16, 15. Jesus said in John 6, 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent, sent me draws him. And I will raise, raise him up on the last day. In other words, salvation requires two parts. First, God deals with our hearts. This is called the conviction. Conviction is when the Holy Spirit reveals our need for Jesus and his forgiveness of sin. This means we don't choose the day we become a Christian. God calls us. However, each person has their own free will to choose. That's the second part. When God deals with our heart, we have we have to repent and will, willfully accept Jesus or walk away. As Christians, it isn't a, it isn't our job to save people. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Our job is to share the gospel and show the love of Jesus. All right, that's pretty long. Um. And tonight's scripture is uh, Romans 10, 9 through 13. Uh, I'll jump right in and go ahead and share that with you. Good evening, Randall. Good evening, uh, Sunfish Assassin. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> well, Cody must, yeah, Cody's seen that before I did. It just popped up on my screen. Good evening, Sunfish. He said that and I couldn't see it. Yeah, it hadn't popped up on my phone yet. It comes up on the TV first. All right, got you. All right. Romans 10, 9 through 13 says, If you openly blah, 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 if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All right. That's a that's a pretty powerful message, and uh, again, I think uh, I think we all should be prepared to uh, give account of uh, of our testimony, you know, at any time because we never know who our testimony is going to help, you know, just get get them on the right path to show them the way to the Lord, uh, and it doesn't have to be the full testimony, you know. I think we all should just have prepared, you know, in our minds about a five minute version of it. And uh, like I said, it doesn't matter what your testimony is. I think all of it, all of us has a testimony that would help someone. <clears throat> We've all been through something that somebody out there can relate. To. That's right. <clears throat> Sorry. Tight anywhere. All right. My wife's coming here looking for tape. All us here. There's some tape. That's it. Quit interrupting. All right. You better hush it down. All right. I got her tape. <laughs> All right. Um, if you want me to, Cody, I'll just go ahead and get into the question. Start off with the first question. Sounds great to me. All right. It says, can you share your personal experience in becoming a Christian? Yes, I can. Uh. As a child, my family didn't attend church. Uh, my great-grandmother was always in my life. 
she was a uh, probably the ver most virtuous woman I've ever known. And uh, she was definitely a Christian. And she told me of stories in the Bible and everything. But she was, of course, older. And she didn't get out and go. But uh, what few times I did go to church as a child, it was because a, a church bus came by our house. And every now and then, I would go out and I'd get on that church bus and I'd go to church. Uh, I remember every every Sunday, they, they would uh, always have an altar call and ask you to come in this little room behind everything. And I think every Sunday I went in that room. But as far as being saved, I uh, truly don't, I know I wasn't saved until I was in my 30s. And uh, through through life and things that had happened, I guess I was looking looking for answers and looking for for something. Anyway, the church we attend at that time, every Halloween was having this thing. It was called uh, Hell House, and we'd went to it, and every scene throughout it told a story, uh, you know, a drunk driver, uh, someone d having an abortion, d different things. But anyway, it just really spoke to me. So after that, that night, I decided that we were going to try to attend that church. And we started going to that church. And when we first started going, every Sunday, I sat in the back and on the back pews, and I felt like the pastor was just preaching to me. And uh, I was thinking, Every Sunday, why is this guy picking on me? But uh, that's when I gave my life to Christ. And uh, just to let you know, prior to that, I was a very heavy drinker. Uh, everything I'd done, I had a beer in my hand. And uh, God took that away from me. And I thank him for it each and every day. But I ended up where we're going to church over something they were having during Halloween. Right. Cody, did you say something? Because I couldn't hear you. I can't hear you. Are you muted? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Good Carson, evening, Jeremy. Karsten FaceTime me to show me your new shoes and didn't realize me that I was up here. <clears throat> so messed it up. Valerie says, I took my youth group to hell house one year. Those images stay with me still 15 years later. Yeah. Um, our church had that for several years and uh, it ended up, it finally got where there was so much controversy over it that they decided that it was just too much to continue on. Uh, it was just, it was bringing, it was bringing light to the wrong thing. So uh, Hell House was great. I, I know a lot of people that it changed their life going through it, but there were so many people protesting it and everything that uh, they finally just quit doing it. <clears throat> All right. Well, do uh, you want to move on to question number two? And Randall says, my past is very scary. Yeah, I gave the short, short version of mine. So, <laughs> but Randall's definitely still going through a lot. Yes. Uh, of course. Continues in my prayers. Of course, Randall, you're. Your wife's on our uh, prayer request list, and as well as Ernie Brown, if Daddy hadn't started writing down yet. Yes. And why he jots those down. Uh, of course, anybody during this whole night, you can always tell us any prayer requests you have. We'll pray over them at the end of the night. Our prayer group at church will also pray over them. They can be as specific or as vague as you want them to be. And also, if you don't want to give your prayer request here, you can always email us at 3 plus one outdoors at gmail.com or even better would be message us on 3plus1outdoors on Facebook Messenger. That's right. 
So. All right. All right. And uh, the second question is this. It says, what does it mean to come under conviction? And then the second part says, do you believe people still experience conviction after becoming a Christian? Well, first part, yes, I believe people still fall under conviction. Uh, conviction is what led, you know, leads you to Christ. It's the Holy Spirit gets in you, uh, and uh, it's searching for something. And uh, Jesus is what it's searching for. And uh, as far as do people, as a Christian, do you still fall under conviction? Yes. Uh I think even more so because every time I do something that I shouldn't have done, I get convicted about it. You know, sometimes I'll be driving down the road and get a little bit of that road rage. And then afterwards, you know, I'm feeling, I feel bad about it. I, I get convicted about it and uh, I start praying about it. Uh, you know, anger just, different things that happen in life. If I do something and uh, lash out, you know, same thing. I get convicted about it uh, and I pray about it. So, yes, conviction, yes, in a Christian, I think you, you probably go through conviction more than than prior to being saved. Right. And it can be confusing when you've just first gotten saved because you, you you've felt that conviction, you've gotten saved, you know, your life may not fully be the way you want it to be yet. You go to church a time or two more, and then you feel that same conviction overwhelm you, and you're like, but I'm done saved, you know. And I've heard numerous people say, you know, they felt like they got saved seven, eight times. In a, you know, for two months straight every Sunday, they felt like they were newly saved, and it's because of that conviction. And, you know, they were saved from the day the, that day that they accepted Christ. It's just they felt that conviction and it was new to them. Uh, Valerie says, our past are the trials that will shape us to the person Christ needs us to be. That's right. He uses us all. Some of us are, some of our loads are a little heavier than, than others to, you know, get, get that testimony that's going to save lives. So, uh, Randall, uh, I, um, thank you for coming in and, uh, hope you have a great evening at work. I know overtime can be hard. That's right. Jeremy says, I was saved at six, but thought my teen through my teenage years, I was backslidden and I redirected my life alongside of my wife 12 years ago. That's awesome. But, there. Yes, it is. It's easy to backslide, but that doesn't mean you're not worthy. And uh, it, even easier than backsliding is getting you getting things back in the right gear. Yeah, one. When, when you say that, the first thing pops in my mind is uh, when uh, Jesus, uh, when when all the disciples were out in the boat and it, and it was storming and the boat was just swaying and they they seen him coming on the water and they thought he was a ghost. And uh, then Peter said, Lord, if that is you, call me to you. And, uh, you know, and, and Jesus told him, come. And so long as Peter had his focus on on Jesus, he stepped out of the boat and was walking on the water. But just as soon as he looked away and he took his focus off, he started going down. And he hollered for Jesus to save him. And Jesus instantly reached down and pulled him back up. And that's always for our life. Anytime we call on him, he's there and he's ready to pull us back up. All right. Randall says, I was raised in church. Grandpa was a minister. Uh, bug man's here he said i'm here and busy listening just right. busy listening all right and bug man we're gonna put your parents on uh, our prayer list tonight um i hope they're doing well i hadn't got to talk to you much in the last couple weeks but uh i know that prayer for them is always needed they uh, they're still in an ongoing battle with some health issues so continue to pray for them real right. gal fishing Stephanie. And <clears throat> Mr. Mike, Mike Greenwood. Can't wait to get to actually meet up with Mike Saturday. Going to be awesome. All right. I'll move on to the third question. And it says, have you ever shared your faith with another person 
And then the second part says, can you share your experience with the group? Do you have well, any, co Cody? Or if you, uh, you know, I, I can think of a bunch of times I've shared my faith with, with different people. And even whenever I was living a terrible lifestyle, I still had faith. I just wasn't, I, I just wasn't tapping into it and doing right. You know, I just, I guess I, I believed, but I just didn't, I, I don't know how you would really explain that. But I remember, you know, even then I would, you know, get in a slump and, and really want to change my life. And I would tell people, you know, but now I would say the most recent is just getting up here on Wednesday night and, and having this small group with all of y'all. Good evening, Miss Chrissy. Good evening, uh, Kelly. So you want to answer, Daddy? Yeah, I mean, I, just like Cody said, I've shared my faith with many people. The biggest one that stands out to me right now is, is one that just happened recently. Maybe that's the reason it stands out because it just happened recently. Um, I work with a guy. He actually works on second shift, but I would see him every day when he come to work. And uh, he, uh, he, is, uh, he is actually uh, from Africa and uh, – he was, uh, uh, he's a Muslim, and he told everybody he was Muslim. Anyway, one day I felt like I should invite him to church, so I did. Some time went by, and I invited him again. So one Sunday he messaged me, and he says, Hey, Mr. Payne, I'm going to come to church today. And so he came to church, and he uh he really he really enjoyed it and uh, I think God was working with him. He came about three Sundays in a row, and then he kind of disappeared. And then what well, a couple weeks went by, and all of a sudden he messaged me and he said, "Hey, I want you to know I have uh, denounced my faith in uh, in Muslim Muslim whatever." I don't know how to say whatever. Anyway, being a Muslim, he said, and, and I'm I'm changing my life, and and I have become a Christian. He said, I'll be at church on Sunday, and uh, I thought that was just one of the most awesome things ever. You know, this man was a, a devout Muslim, and uh, just through an invite to church, and whether he just came to uh, to to just honor my me inviting him. God, God got to deal with him, and and now he's a Christian man. And awesome. He he's went from from death to life now. And Matt, welcome. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Um, <clears throat> Chrissy says they're putting a midline in Ernie right now. Uh, so uh, let me get caught up on these comments here, and then Daddy, we'll go ahead and say, a, or let's not even wait. Let's just go ahead and say a prayer for. I don't know what a midline is. But uh, if he's having something done, we want to pray for him right now. Yes. Guys, if you would, join me in prayer for, for Ernie. Uh, Father God, Lord, we come before you right now, Lord, and, and we lift up our Ernie Brown to you, and we lift up Chrissy to you, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to be with the doctors, Lord, to guide them, to, to show them every step that they need to take to take care of Ernie, Lord. Lord, we just ask and believe in you for great healing on Ernie and his body, Father. Father, we lift up Chrissy because we know, Lord, she, she's been having health issues, and, and Lord, we believe in you for healing her as well. But Lord, we just ask you to comfort them both. And Lord, just let them both know that you are with them and let your presence be felt, Father God. Lord, we love you. And we, we believe in you for these things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and Mike Greenwell says, if you could say a prayer for a family here in town, don't personally know them, but a gas leak in their house uh, exploded, left three dead and many injured, totally destroyed four houses, damaged 39 houses. Oh, my goodness. Um, what's the name of that town so we can... Uh, family in what town it just gives us something to you know we're, we're not stumbling over our words as much when we're praying uh in the end valerie says 
I have no problem showing or sharing my faith, but I believe how I act, talk, and treat others. Action shows Christ to others better than my words. Yes, uh, Valerie takes both. It does. Um, Because if you're not living an example, your words are going to have no value to that person. There, you know, it's just going to perpetuate the uh, the idea of being a hypocrite and all that. It takes it takes both. If you're not first living by living an example, your words aren't going to have the same power. That's right. That's right. People see what we do. Evansville, Indiana. So, uh, victims of the house explosion in Evansville, Indiana. Thank you, Mike Greenwell, for bringing that to us. We definitely want to pray for all the people that it have been involved in that tragedy. All right. Yes, I got it wrote down. So, All right. Well, uh, what are we on? Question three, Daddy? That was three right then. Four? We're down to four. How many questions we got tonight? Seven? Seven. All right. We're on question four. All right. On question four, it says, the Apostle Paul brings clarity to the how in terms of how people meet Jesus. Which two things stand out to you in verse 9? So let me read verse 9 again. Verse 9 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, what two things stand out to you? Um, well, things that stand out to me is declare openly that Jesus is Lord and and then uh, believe it in your heart. All right. And, and those two things stand out to me as well. But uh, more, than, more than anything, what stands out to me is that's a very short list. It doesn't say anything about being a good person. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't have that big list we all think of when we think what you have to do to to be to be considered a Christian. It's accept Jesus into your heart and declare it openly. And uh, declaring openly can be uh, you know, our church does a lot of times just while everybody has their head bowed, dec- you raise your hand, that's declaring it. Uh Baptism is the most prominent way, and we do baptism a lot at our church. We have them quite a few Sundays at our church. That's an that's an open way of uh, declaring your faith, you know. And then just speaking to somebody, I also think's an open way of uh, declaring your faith. So, but, I think I think a lot of times, just you know, when we're out, when we're at work, a lot of times I think I could I could just about tell you the people that are Christian people just in their demeanor, just in how they act and how they talk. Uh, because, you know, the person that's not a Christian, they're usually ranting, raving, mad, cussing. It, and the person that is a Christian could be doing the same, that is a Christian, be doing the same job, and they're happy, smile on their face, talking nice to people. Uh, I think... Uh, a lot of times you can tell in that way, but just like Cody said, it doesn't it doesn't mean you're a Christian just because you're a good person. Uh, there's a lot of good people out there that that aren't Christian. Uh, being a Christian is having the faith in, yeah. in the Lord. And, and there's a lot of people that like to rant and rave and get mad like me that are Christian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt. Uh, we, we shouldn't cuss just because uh, I don't know how much of a sin it is to actually cuss, but it's just a terrible habit and uh, doesn't it's not really leading a good example. Uh, but there's there's many Christians, me included, that tend to have a potty mouth whenever they're joking around. Uh, but, you know, it's not leading the best example, but you know that. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I I take more from what they 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 don't have on that list. You know, I think so easy a child can understand it. It's That's it's right. really simple. You know, the the bar is set low. Every man on earth can accept Christ into his heart and become a Christian. It, right. 
it's not a it's not an elite group. <laughs> <laughs> you know. No. I mean, you look at the disciples. Look look at the life each and every one of them live prior to being a disciple. You know, they were fishermen. And we all know how fishermen, <laughs> fishermen talk and and do uh, tax collectors, uh, prostitutes. So the list goes on and on. Tax collectors was it? Top Murderers. Of, yeah, the the gentleman that was on the cross next to Jesus. Right, the thief. Yes. So. Yeah. Jesus will forgive anything. Only, only, only sin that says it will not forgive is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, denying the Holy Spirit. All right. Question number five says this. If someone was sitting in front of you who never heard the gospel before, how would you start a conversation about Jesus? Okay, sorry. Uh, Chris Lee called me, and I didn't want to hit the voicemail button on him. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> All right. It says, if someone was sitting in front of you who never heard the gospel before, how would you start a conversation about Jesus? I would just start a conversation. Uh, oftentimes you don't have, and it might not even be the best method to just lead off with that, because I guarantee you, if you just start a conversation, something's going to come up that you can there's a situation that's similar in your life that you can test testify to how jesus helped you in that situation that's right and it, it's not just you know it, it because just saying hey you should believe in jesus and here's why is not near as powerful as oh man you know i i dealt with something similar to that and here's how Jesus delivered him from de delivered me from it. Right. Yeah. So I think that's where it comes in being prepared to give your testimony. So as you start off that conversation, you're speaking with each other, maybe talking to each other, chit chatting, giving some of your background, and there, then I, that gives you the opportunity to share your testimony. So, all right. How, what do you want to? Is that your answer? Yes. Okay. And then I'm waiting for Richard's comment to come up here in StreamYard because I see a couple comments on TV. <laughs> here it is. Richard says, one of the easiest ways I found to ask, what do you think happens after you die? The Ray Comfort Method. Hey, that's a, I, I'm not familiar with the Ray Comfort Method myself. Uh, Daddy may be. But, you know, right there, that's a quick, simple, and easy way that to really start that conversation. And uh, I like that, Richard. I'm glad you, you shared that with us. Well, Ray Comfort's known for, for going and talking to just to anybody. The, I mean, gang bangers, whatever. And, uh, and he just simply asked them that. So, and then, so thank you, Richard. And uh, Greenwell says, Larry, after you end this live, can you just send me the link and we can chat about what I wanted to call you about? Yes, if I, uh, I'll have to. I can text him the link. All right. All right. And then uh, Matt says, you need to see their demeanor. What kind uh, of recon their body language? Reckon. Reckon their, oh, reckon their body language. That way you can tell what kind of method or what kind of move, sorry, I can't hardly say tonight, they're in to know how to start a conversation with them. Yep. I stumbled through every bit of that. Start with my glasses. Well, I think in all things, if we talk, speak nicely to someone, we have a lot better chance at uh, – at leading them to Christ or, or even getting in a good conversation with them. Even if they're mad, whatever, uh, we speak nicely. And, and, uh, I guess, like you said, you kind of got to see what they're mad about, but, uh, we can, we have the opportunity. <laughs> Matt said, yeah, Cody, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Sorry, I couldn't read. All right, let's see if I can do better here. Kelly says, the biggest thing is when starting a conversation is the actions that you show in your everyday walk. And it will show them a Christian way of life and that sometimes that is the icebreaker. Yes. I don't think, uh, I don't think there's, you know, no right way or wrong way. It's, uh, it, it's, it's all in the demeanor we speak in to be able to get that opportunity. And Amy says, sorry, I'm late. Been an awful day. Well, sorry you've had such a rough day, Miss Amy, but thank you for coming in. We definitely appreciate and love that you're here. Yeah, Amy, is there anything that we can pray for for you guys for? If we do, just let us know. If there is, just let us know. Most certainly. All right. So what we on question... Six. Six. All right. All right. And question six says, why is the word everyone in verse 13 so important? And then it says, why should this encourage us to be more proactive in sharing our faith? So let me read uh, read verse 13 with the key on it being the word everyone. Verse 13 says, for Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, just a, the first thing that comes to my mind is like a call back to the test, the uh, testimony you were sharing earlier, Daddy. It doesn't say everyone who's not Muslim, everyone who's not, you know, Buddhist, whatever the case may be, atheist. It, it's everyone. That gentleman you were referring to was was a um, a a proclaimed um, Muslim. And, you know, you invited him. He was still part of everyone. He went to church. The Holy Ghost did its job. And he's now a Christian. He's going to have ever everlasting life. Right. So, you know, it, I've been a terrible person at points in my life. And it, it didn't, just because I was a bad person doing bad things, didn't mean that I wasn't a part of everyone. Because everyone means everyone. That's exactly right. That's why it's so important to me, I think. Even the ones we don't like, they yep. can call on the name of Jesus. Right. Exactly. Well, that question, I think, uh, that, that is just short, sweet, and straight to the point. I don't know. I don't think we could elaborate on that a lot more because everyone's there, period. <laughs> you know, and, and that makes you want to be that, you know, like it's, it asks, you know, it makes you want to be more proactive because, we can tell by the things some people are doing that they probably don't have the faith. And uh, maybe through sharing just a little bit with them, you know, we plant that seed. That seed may not grow that day, but if we sprinkle a little water on it, every time we see them, eventually that seed will grow. And Matt says, well, I'll, I'll probably let you read Matt's comments since I stumbled through it so badly. Um, says, uh, I'll give it another shot. Everyone. Everyone, meaning anyone who calls to the Lord will sit next to him in heaven. All right. Hey, you got to give me some redemption here. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly right, Matt. And then <laughs> Kelly says, everyone includes everyone walks the earth, no matter your religion or what sins you've committed. Everyone who walks, crawls, lays, ever existed on earth. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, Kelly. Good evening, Lee. Well, hey, Lee, we're glad you're here, whether you're the first one or the last one. We're glad you're here. Exactly right. Hey, don't worry about whether it was easy one or not. I did better and Lee. <laughs> uh, Normally, Daddy's the one that stumbles through reading comments worse than I do. But I, I bought him hooked on phonics so he could get through this. Yeah. All righty. Well, are we on our last question? We are. We're already down to the last question already. And the last question says, besides sharing our faith, what are other ways we can show people Jesus? Well, I think we've done spoke of it. Our actions. Our actions 
speak louder than words. Exactly right. <laughs> uh, Miss Becca said hooked on phonics didn't work for her. <laughs> it didn't work for me either. <laughs> so, hey, I read good for a Kentuckian. <laughs> That's it. We just we don't we don't speak English. We speak Kentuckian. You know, I mean, I'm a little behind the eight ball on this whole ordeal. You know, I. I read, I read good relative to my environment. <laughs> and then Lee adds, do our good deeds. And that's exactly right. You know, our actions, our demeanor, you know, the smile we put on our face, all of it, uh, all of it's what is just a big a part as sharing your testimony. You know, it takes, it takes both. Oh, yeah. my northerner get uh, out of here with that stuff earlier he wanted to argue me argue with me saying i needed a map that kentucky is the north no we live right on the kentucky tennessee line i don't care if i'm from louisville or lexington it's the south <laughs> well time him out he gets that stuff going all right <laughs> well all right miss Ballard says uh in our actions, showing forgiveness, kindness, patience, and praying for people, either with them or over them. That's exactly right. And Miss Amy Evans says, demonstrate the love of Christ. Ask the Lord to help us show kindness to others. A little kindness may open a big door for the gospel. Yes. And uh, the thing of it is, we got to remember, as, as Christians... We all are uh, the body of Christ. And uh, if one part of the body is not working right, a lot of times the body just doesn't work right. Or if there's a piece of the body missing, the body doesn't work right. So we've always got to help one another. When one's in need, give them that help they need. Uh, whatever it is, we're, we should always be ready and willing to help each other and and that's how that's how we stay the body of christ and stay functioning as the body of christ by helping each other do what we need to do look here we got a whole party going now <laughs> i leave the screen keeps looking better all the time well i don't know i think they're bringing my i brought the average up and they might have brought it down <laughs> So, well, I think that was our last question. Um, of course, you can, if anybody has anything in particular they want to talk about, uh, I'm pretty sure y'all have all heard me say this a bunch. At the end of the stream, we always sit here, fellowship. We can talk about uh, anything, fishing. It can be Christ-related. Any, And then at any time during the stream, we're always open to prayer requests. Uh, so, um, I know that Tomorrow night, we've got a short video coming out of Kelly Bullock's new PB. So I hope to see as many of y'all as possible over there. Uh, it, it was a, It's an awesome little video and uh, really fun. And then also, this weekend, we get to meet up and fish with Mike Greenwell some. And Jeremy's going to be out on the water same time as us. And we'll have us a big barbecue. So let me uh, rearrange this screen. Daddy, you got anything you want to add to any of that? Yeah, I'm writing down Valerie Irwin's uh, friend. Okay. Right and uh, so she's been go going through trials since uh, since since January. Yes. But yes, um, I just want everybody to know, just like Cody said, anytime on here you need prayer for anything, put them in the chats. Good evening, Don R. And uh, and we will definitely pray over them. Uh, not only will we pray over them, I give a list, uh, a copy of this list. I take a list with me so I can pray over them every day. And I give a list to Amy, and she takes the church with her, and the, the whole church staff prays over them each day. Um, but not only that, at any time during your week, any time that anybody needs prayer for anything, just send us a message on 3 plus 1 outdoors or or send us an email at 3 plus 1 outdoors gmail.com 
and we will gladly add you to the prayer, prayer list and pray for you. Yep. And Lee says, sitting in the boat, watching the sun peek over the hills and just having a talk with the Lord uh, is one of the most peaceful things I can do. Wish everyone could experience just one. I, I, that's true, uh, Lee. I tell you what, some of the best conversations I think I've ever had, I was out in the deer stand, just me and God, and uh, it's pretty awesome when you get out there like that. And here lately, we've had plenty of time to talk to God because we weren't reeling anything in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's it going, Mike? Not too bad. How you guys doing? How you doing? doing great. Doing great. How about you, Jeremy? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, buddy. Y'all excited for the, y'all as excited for this weekend as I am. I'm ready. I mean, I get to fish bearing every weekend, but I'm <laughs> I'm twice. I'm just as excited as if I get as the trip I got to take to Santee or when I get to go to Tennessee River, having everybody here and getting to, and then you know you setting up a time and a place for us all to be able to get together. Uh, I'm just I'm really excited. It'll be a good time for sure. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think Baron has come a long ways. Uh, and I think Baron has got to the point right now that at any time out there, you have the potential to hook into the fish of a lifetime. All right, I'll ask you this, Jeremy, because me and Daddy talk about this every now and then. Do you think there's a state record fish in Baron? Just one somewhere. And Stack Picker Blue Cat, I think it's 107. One, yeah, 106.9. Is it, it's Kentucky Waters, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's 105. 105? Okay. 106.9. What, what's oh, the state record? That's right. It got broken a couple years ago. Yep. Ohio River. Ohio River up around Owensboro. No, well, no. that was the, the first one was uh, around Owensboro. Yeah. The one a couple years ago was down in the Paducah area. Okay. During a tournament? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Don R. Appreciate yes, you joining. Thank you so much, Don R. The family membership. So, what'd you say, Jeremy? Sorry, we all get to talking over each other. I don't know about Blue Cat. Me and Randall had this conversation uh, the other night. He thinks there's a hundred pounder in this lake. I don't know. Uh, I'd say the biggest fish, if I had to guess, would be a big flathead if it was a potential state record. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I think. I really do believe there's I, I believe there's a hundred pound hundred pound plus blue cat, but I definitely believe that Baron could be holding that hundred pound flathead as well. Of course our state record's ninety eight pound for flathead and that was caught in Green River. Uh, I seen an eighty four pounder come out eighty four pound flathead come out of Baron. So Yeah, but you didn't catch it on rod and reel. I didn't say I did. I said I seen it come out of Baron. Yeah. Can you imagine catching the 84 pound flathead on a rod and reel? Well, he was the one. Yeah, okay. On a rod and reel. Well, he was the one that caught that fish, but he just didn't catch it on rod and reel. <laughs> he caught it with his hand. He would think you got a log. <laughs> That's gracious. Yeah. You, you know, breaking the Kentucky record for flatheads is going to be a lot harder than breaking it for blue cat. Because a 99 pound, uh, well, it would take a hundred pound because you got to beat it by two pounds to, to I think, actually get the record. Uh, so a hundred pound flathead is a lot more rare than a hundred nine pound blue, wouldn't you say? Probably so. Well, I think what the biggest biggest blue in Barron is. Just, I mean, this is all hypothetical. Of course, none of us know. It's impossible to know. Well, well, you had put a number on it. I, I, I tell everybody I'm going to catch a 111 pounder. <laughs> he might lie to everybody. <laughs> what do you think, Jeremy? I don't know. I just want to get over at 50 pound mark. We've only done it twice, but Braden's mm -hmm. got to land them both times. So I can't get over 45, 46 pounds. So. They mean use the same. Uh, we've had. I've had just this year seven, probably six or seven fish that, you know, I was out running the trolling motor. Daddy was out, you know, putting the rods out and stuff. Us fishing as a team together, getting the boat, and it not be my turn to reel it in. 
Rogers. And then Daddy caught a 53-pounder. Okay, you and you and Randall fished that tournament in the winter, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we seen y'all over there? Yeah. We had a double up. And me and Daddy always take turns. I catch one, he catches one. I catch one. We had a double up, and I, and I reeled them both in. Okay? And... You know, just and I should have let him reel one in because that means the next fish was for sure his because I'd already stole his fish. <laughs> 53 pounder. See? That, was a, that was a 50 that day. The 53 was before that. The week before. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And 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 it was, a, you know, a 50 pound fish, new PB for me if I hadn't been a butthole. And, <laughs> and, the, and the double up rod come off the front of the boat right beside him. I was like, well, you holding the camera here. I'm taking this. <laughs> Cost myself. Well, Miss Amy said she's excited to fish. If it goes like last trip did, she's kicking Lee off the boat <laughs> and, and, and doing the drive. And Danny said there was another hundred plus pounder pulled out of the Mississippi by Creole. I think it was 108. Yeah, I, I seen uh, Mississippi has a new state record. And a guy caught a 104 pound blue on a trout line. And that, but that's a different record, right? Because it's not caught rod or reel. It's a, I guess all tackle. All tackle. I just want anything bigger than fifty three right now, so I can rub it in Lee's face. <laughs> you want that to do Lee? Well, so uh, have you got you a good game plan for him for this weekend already? About the spots you want to hit. Uh, you've been kind of running it through your head much, depending on weather and whatnot. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to have some nice, uh, stable weather come the weekend. I think I have a game plan for what I'm going to do, but right now I'm focused on tomorrow night. I lost a big flathead back there in the log jam a couple of weeks ago, and I really want to try for him again. Yeah. So conditions will be right for him tomorrow night, hopefully, and I'm going back there. And I think these colder nights is really going to help those fish want to move up in these shallower areas similar to where you're you're talking about fishing. Uh, that surface temp's going to come down a degree or two and make it even that much more comfortable on the fish, I believe. Right. And we talked a little bit earlier about the thermocline. Uh, me and Randall went out the other night. And I wasn't even showing one on sonar. so We didn't see one the other night. We didn't we, see one Friday night. We got into 22-foot water and didn't see it. I mean, we never got in deep, deep water, and there may be some out in the main part of the lake. But if it's there, it's pushed down a lot more than it was. Yeah. I actually earlier went and traded in the temporary slip you get from the machine when you buy your annual pass. And uh, traded it in for the placard. And I talked to one of the, uh, uh, you know, people there that work for the Army Corps engineers. And. She's supposed to be, she said she thinks today they went out and got their uh, water samples and she's supposed to be emailing me the information on the dissolved oxygen levels and water temperatures at, at different different depths. So hopefully I get that information soon. Yeah. I think there'll be a lot of fish caught shallow this weekend. Well, we're going to live and die by it. If, if, if they're not, if you're not catching them shallow, then we're not catching them because that's where we're going to be. Cause I, we're going to live and die by fishing probably 15 foot or less, probably more than eight to 10 foot, right? Maybe yeah. even that. I was thinking 13 or less for me. So pretty yeah. close to the same. Yeah. You know, I, I really, uh, I, I think and most of the time when we're on that 15 foot range, we've got baits that are spread out all the way to 10 foot because we've got such a spread with the four planer boards out. So, uh, you know, and that's, that's not, I know I crammed the dragon stuff down everybody's throat. They probably get tired of hearing. The big plus of it's with that spread. If all my rods are coming off my far left rod, that's in 10 foot of water, and none of them are coming out of this 15. I know I, it gives me a better idea where to key in at, you know, I'm going to move the boat closer to the bank or to the shallower part. And I know for my next spot, what I want to be looking for. So, it's a really good uh, finding tool as well. So. 
Mike, I may anchor up tomorrow night, but after that, I may try dragging or drifting or something a little bit, just depending on what happens tomorrow. Well, I, you know, I, I like anchoring spots like where you you anchor a lot. You know, those structure spots, something I can actually see, but just anchoring on a hole out in the middle of something, I don't know. It's just something about sitting still right out there in the middle of the water or something. It's I get bored so much quicker. When I can actually see the structure coming out of the water, I feel like I'm fishing something, and it's easier for me to sit there longer. And it's just completely in my head. Cody, you have to, you got to have a boat to move a boat. <laughs> I'm going to try to book a Gulf Shores sometime. as y'all next year. Hey, that'd be awesome, Danny. That would be absolutely awesome, dude. Get down there and get to do some saltwater fishing together, some surf fishing. So, uh, Mike, what's your expectations for Saturday? Well, I'm going to tell you now, if you guys are going to be fishing that shallow, I'm going to be nervous all day. <laughs> anytime, anytime I get in 15 footer below, I'm like, I just don't feel right. I just, I just don't feel right. I just don't well, feel right. You so. know, you know, though, Mike, that's the big thing. Fishing a lake all the time. Most of the year, we're fishing 15 foot or less of water. The only time we really key on that deeper water is in the winter time, where you in a river and a river you fish those deep holes all, pretty much all year long. But on this lake, most of the time we're we're fishing fifteen foot or less of water. And I, the river was rising one day, and I went out of my comfort zone, and I went over in some some thirteen foot of water, and I was suspended drifting, and I was marking fish, but I couldn't get nothing to bite, and it really didn't help my confidence in that shallow water at all. You know, uh, and I think even in the winter when we go deep, we probably make a mistake some days by not fishing shallow those days. Uh, it's just they drag the lake down so much in the winter here. The sha There's not really a lot of shallow flats. There's not near as many at least because you get down to, to a lot of, a lot of places are just channel, you know, and then, there might be a little water over here, but it's like one, two foot deep. I don't like that. But uh, even in the winter, I think they can be caught shallow. Fish love pushing bait up against the bait. You know, they'll find that big school of bait and they'll push it against the bank to kind of corner it. And then the same with like, uh, I think Jeremy fishes them a lot. Rock bluffs, you fish rock bluffs a lot, don't you? Yeah. Same with that, you know. Fish love cornering that bait against the rock bluffs. Is that your thinking behind those spots? I see you fish them all the time. Well, I used to hang blues and stuff when I was crappie fishing, when I was spider rigging those uh, bluff banks. And so that they got me, that put it in my head, you know, maybe they're chasing bait down these bluffs and stuff. So, yeah. So it's just, it just adds to a way for them a way to kind of corner that bait or ambush it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I will say, over the last month or so, 75% of my fish, at least, have been three to five foot deep. 75%, three to five foot. This year, and I'm just going off this year because it's, it's what's in my memory. <laughs> uh, I'd say 90% of our fish come out of seven foot of water. Or like <laughs> 90%. All, all the big fish came out of seven foot of water or less. I don't think Greenwell believes us. That's crazy. <laughs> and we've caught, we've probably caught, what, this year, we've probably caught seven fish over 40? More than that. Definitely more than that. We've caught three over 50 this year. Three over 50 this year, probably 10 over 40. And, uh, I don't know how many of the 30. You know, probably 15 or 20 in the 30s, which are all huge fish in my book. Now, to other people, they may that still may be a small fish, but the heck with them. I think it's a great fish. Yeah. So, I had a question. I'm guessing it's for bumping Mike there because, unless Jeremy uh, does some bumping. Um, if, if I was going to, if I was going to bump shallow, I would slow the boat down a little bit more, kind of like the dragon deal, have them baits extra far out. When you're the shallower you go, the longer you want your bait out behind the boat. Same way with dragging. 
in the winter, I don't care if the bait's directly under the boat if I'm fishing 30 foot or deeper. But uh, we get hit, it, hit just as much on our down rods as we do our planer boards. But fishing shallow, the planer boards get smoked twice as much, if not more, in the shallow water. Just because big fish have seen, know what a boat is, you know, they get spooked, I think. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you, you know, down the Tennessee River, down around Chattanooga, Nickajack, uh, they uh, are Chickamauga Dam. That that water that they're bumping down through air on average is probably not 10, 12 foot deep. Less than that, probably. Yeah. Yeah. 10, probably around 9, 10 foot. Yeah. Some of those areas I know for a fact are like 7, 8 foot that I see bobcat bump. So, but it's different waters too, you know. I mean, the fish are going to go to areas that the bait are getting pushed to them, and they're still comfortable, or at least that's my theory. And you know, the way the water is washed out the channel and the bank and everything, and how things have been constructed, it's going to be completely different for the area that Mike fishes versus what they're fishing, or even like if you just go up a pool, it may be completely different, even on the same river. We got Chad in here, Mr. Chad Fields. But but you 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 don't question Mike. What what is your expectations? Are you expecting zero fish, a few big oh, fish, wow. just a few? You got to have something in your head that you think will probably be the most likely outcome. I'm expecting to catch at least some thirties. Some thirty. Look at it. I, <laughs> I'm a, I can tell you now, Mike. When I'm on the boat, I'm going for the fences. I'm hoping I go catch some big eight-inch bluegill, and every rod I put out is going to have a whole one on it. Yeah. We're going to run big baits this weekend, hopefully. You know, another night, we actually, if we had to run some smaller baits, because we had whole shad on that were like nine inches long, yeah. and a lot of them come back with, with half the body off of them. I think we'd have caught a lot more smaller fish, but they just weren't getting everything in their mouth, you know. But – if you you know we were wanting to catch big fish because the goal was to get Kelly a PB. Uh, oh, that's a compliment. I'm getting it off. You don't. Need to me. <laughs> thank you, Richard. Yeah, thank you, buddy. <laughs> that's right, Chad. Chad. <laughs> yeah. How's my rigs? And then tells me where to fish. <laughs> tells me which rocks to flip over to go get my worms so I can catch my bluegill. <laughs> What's your expectations, Jeremy? And I, I don't really know. I think there'll be a lot of fish caught this week. Uh, I don't really know. If you hear somebody screaming back in Skaggs, that means I got that fish. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And you don't want it to just be a 50. You want it to be a 50 flat, 50 flathead, right? Oh, I don't care. I'll take whatever. You want that big flathead that, that haunted you from the other day. Oh, I, I know when we was out bait fishing, that's when you said, I just had a heck of one on he come up <laughs> halfway to the boat. I caught that 43-pound blue about 30 minutes after I lost that other one. And that first one, he didn't even know he was hooked yet. <laughs> and, uh. He, he felt a whole lot bigger than that 43. Makes you sick just wondering how big he actually was, don't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing about it. I, you know, anybody that's fished for a while, when you pick that rod up, you can just about tell how big that fish is. You know, there's a few cases things happen a little different that you can't tell. But most time, just as soon as you feel him, you know whether he's a good one or not. Yeah. He bent that rod over three or four times before I even went up there to crank on him. And I got him halfway to the boat, and he just come unbuttoned. That, you know, and flatheads are notorious for that, just having to hold that bait and holding it in their mouth and then just letting it go. Yeah. You know, I guess my expectations are lower than what they would have been a month ago. Uh, we've not had the fastest bike the last couple of trips out we've went. The, the weather's not been perfect on the days we went. and Things have not just worked out the way I wanted them to. But we have caught fish every one of those trips. I mean, we haven't been skunked. But it's not been as good as what it was the month before. And August always seems slow for us. 
and uh, maybe we need to do more searching. Maybe we're fishing the same pattern as we're having success in July and trying to carry that on through the summer. Maybe we need to be changing up things. I don't know. But I think some good fish will be caught. I don't know that the numbers will be there, but I think I think there will definitely be some big fish caught. I'm hoping everybody gets on a big one. Our last, our last trip out, the pressure was really high. And I... I, I'm a firm believer that that pressure affects the bike big time. If you can get that pressure down 29.7, 29.8, I think you're going to do good. But if that pressure's up there 30.01, 30.02. It's 30.09 the other day when we fished. It's rough. You believe in that, either one of y'all? The barometric pressure makes a difference? I'm a firm believer in it all. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. I believe in it, but I still go whenever I can. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Just because I like knowing. Uh, there's days, I and maybe, I'm, maybe I shouldn't look, because I know I'm going to the water either way, and I'm on the way to the water. I'm like, today seems like it's going to be a slower day. But I still like to know, know it just so I can kind of have a plan in my head. If possible, when the pressure's higher, I actually like to fish a hair deeper because I think, that that barometric pressure doesn't bother them as much in the deeper water. But so the other night we actually fished more towards like 18 foot of water and it seemed to, we were getting bites there. They were just a bunch of short strikes or fish that were just ripping the bait in a half. And it didn't look like gar bites because, you know, Baron's full of gar. And sometimes when you reel in that half a bait, you'll see the rib bone stick out. So you can tell it's a gar. These look like catfish had a hold of it. They look like smaller catfish had a hold of the baits and didn't hook up. Good evening, Keith. Tell you one thing I'll do is like on my Thursdays when I when I go fishing after work, I will look at it while I'm at work. And if I see that it's a little higher, whenever I get out on the water, I'll shorten my bumping rig down quite a bit. So I usually got like a three foot or so liter. I'll shorten it down to two foot. And that seems to, you know, as soon as you catch that first fish and he's covered in mud, you feel like the hero. <laughs> And, and that's something we we need to do more because I'll be honest, we run we run long leaders. We run like you said, three foot or longer leaders most of the time. Uh, and most of the time we're wanting that bait to get up off the bottom. But uh, I think a lot of times, just what you just said, uh, when that barometric pressure is high, you gotta be willing to go ahead and change those leaders out and put shorter ones on. Is three foot what the leader size you use? Uh, dragon baits. Yes. Yes. Yeah, most time around thirty inches. Yeah, we uh, we use a three foot, and every one of them has a demon dragon on it, so it's it's floating up. Plus, it's rattling, and uh, I, that's another thing. Uh, we've used the flo floats, and we've used the floats with rattles, and I, I'm a firm believer in the in the demon dragons. How much do you guys uh, adjust your speeds? Uh, we usually, through the winter and through the fall and even in the spring, we usually hold to 0. 0.5. But through the summer months, we've been we've been running a lot up around 0. 0.8. Yep. Sometimes, a uh, few times in areas that I'm not as confident, I might even bump it up a hair higher than that. But 0. 0.8 normally when it, the water's warmer and I think the fish are moving around a little faster. When the water's real cold and they're holding to the bottom, normally 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, go really slow in those times. Uh, I'm going to drop a comment here, and it's got the link to Fin Seeker TV. That's Jeremy's channel. And it's also got the link to Greenwell's Fishing, uh, and that's Mike's channel. If any of y'all hadn't checked them out, be sure to do so. Um, Jeremy's actually, you still working on your hours, ain't you, Jeremy? Yeah. So any, any watch time Jeremy can get, go over there. Be sure to watch the whole video. Comment, like. That drives other people to watching them. Let's help him get his hours. And then Mike's got a live show tomorrow evening at 4 o'clock, I believe. And yes. uh, be sure to be there for that. It's going to be a great show. He'll even have J-Dog out there fishing on stream with him. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm actually going to have some guests on the boat with me. All right. Well, that sounds even better. And, and while you're telling about it, uh, Mike, go ahead and tell about October 16th. 
10 16 22 is going to be my 10 year celebration of my sober date so i'm not just going to celebrate for myself i'm going to celebrate and invite anybody that's in recovery and active recovery to come on screen and fish with us if you don't want to come fish with us just pop in we'll send you the link you can tell your story and then you can pop right back out however you want to do it but that's going to be a big awesome show yes I can't it wait. Is. yeah i can't either i'm excited all right and uh, for anybody in here that doesn't know, Jeremy, also, if you're into crappie fishing, he's one of the best crappie fishermen you'll ever meet. He has a really good handle on, on the crappie at all time. You also bass fish uh, here and there, too, don't you, uh, Jeremy? I do a little bit with Braden. Braden likes to go bass fishing, so if he wants to go, I'll, I'll go with him. But other than that, I don't really do much with it. Catfish and crappie, huh? Yeah. I hadn't done as much crappie fishing this year as normal. But I've been focusing on catfishing. All right. That's us. We mainly catfish, but we will do some crappie fishing. Well, uh, it we it's 7-11. We normally cut her off around 7 because Patriot James goes live. Uh, if everybody don't mind, we're going to go ahead and take the time real quick to pray over this prayer list. Yes, guys don't care pray with me father god lord we lift up randall and his wife lord uh you know she's fighting cancer lord and we just ask you lord uh, to be the great physician that you are and heal her lord comfort randall lord just guide their life lord and uh we lift up ernie lord uh you know everything that's going on in his life lord with his health and chrissy and her health lord and, Lord, we just ask you to be in their presence, Lord, and just comfort them as they go through this stuff. We lift up Bugman and his parents, Lord. We know his dad has been very ill. His, his mother's been ill. Lord, and Bugman's been taking care of them. Lord, we just ask you to provide for them, Lord, and again, and comfort them. And we just ask for your healing power. Father, uh, there was a ga gas explosion in Evansville, Indiana. There's people dead injured, homeless. Lord, uh, it's just a bad situation. Father, we just ask you to uh, lift up and comfort those that have lost, be with those that are injured and help heal them. And Lord, uh, the ones that have lost their homes and their belongings, Lord, we just ask you to provide what they need to get through life. Father, uh, Valerie Irwin, friend, has been going through trials, Lord. You know the situation, Lord, and we're just lifting it up to you and believing in you, Lord, to give guidance in taking care of these situations. Uh, just got a message on uh, on Messenger, Lord, to, to ask for prayer for Lori, who has been battling cancer also, Lord, and uh, we lift her up to you. And uh, each and every one of these people, Lord, we just ask you to comfort their loved ones, to guide them, Lord, not only to guide them, Lord, we just ask you to be the guiding light beneath each and every one of our feet and to put a hedge of safety around us, Lord, as we go through our day-to-day -day chores. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, uh, it's, been a great, it's been a great live stream. We appreciate each and every one of y'all for coming in here. Really appreciate you, Jeremy and Mike, for coming up and fellowshipping with us. But we're going to wrap this up tomorrow night, 6.30 Central Standard Time. We'll have the Kelly Bullock PB video going live. Be yeah. sure to join in on that premiere. Click those links I dropped a minute ago. Check out Mike. Check out Jeremy. And y'all have a blessed evening. As we always say, it's God, family, and the great outdoors. God bless. Have a great evening.